Hi, this is Paul from the Proteus Academy, and today is Medium Form Monday, and today we're going to be having a video that talks about mindfulness for debate and explains what mindfulness is and how it can potentially help you in terms of your performance life. So first off, what is mindfulness? Mindfulness refers to one's awareness of internal states. Mindfulness is not an innate trait, but rather a skill that can be learned through practice. And mindfulness ultimately has two primary components, which are attention and poise. And so we're going to talk about attention first and foremost, since it makes up the majority of sort of the mindfulness foundation. Attention. Attention is the capacity to direct your attention to the things relevant to the task at hand. So essentially what this means is in our pursuit of debate or any other competitive discipline, we are sort of tasked with putting as much focus as possible, as much energy, as much effort into our goal. Um, and to do that, we have to sort of identify that goal and more importantly, be able to direct our efforts towards that consciously, right? Because there's a lot of unconscious factors that might be mitigating our ability to do so. Uh, attention obviously is a core part of mindfulness, as I've stated, but more importantly, I think it's the internal link in terms of debate lingo to effective training and high level performance. So. To talk about attention a little bit more, uh, a lot of people have an experience where they can train for hours, right? They practice for hours and hours and hours, and they feel like they're getting nowhere. But meanwhile, one of their teammates or their friends or someone else they know, whether it's in debate or video games or whatever, uh, puts in a lot less effort, but ultimately gets better results. And I think that in many instances, that can be attributed to our ability to uh, have attention and to focus our attention towards things. And the way that we sort of train mindfulness uh, and attention is through various exercises, one of which will be conducting at the end of this. But to continue on the subject of attention, I think that to make this a little more abstract, I'm sure everyone's heard of sort of this term, the zone, right? Or being in flow state. Um, and you might have even experienced this before in your own life. And as a result, right, you've had effective practice or effective competition or just done things that you otherwise felt you couldn't do. Uh, when people talk about being in the zone, a lot of the times they basically describe it as sort of processing everything that's going on at once and effortlessly doing so, sort of being aware of their surroundings and all of the components and whatever it is they're trying to direct that effort towards. Uh, and the problem is we suck at paying attention to the correct thing, right? Like a lot of people can't will their uh, attention towards the object of their desire or the thing that they ultimately want to occur. And I think that one of the easiest examples of this to sort of make this less abstract is your clothing, right? Ostensibly, hopefully, you're wearing clothing right now, but you're not too aware of feeling it, even though you are at all times feeling it, right? Your skin, just by the sort of sensation of touch, knows it's wearing clothing, but our brain sort of puts that to the back burner and doesn't pay attention to it. But right now, now that we've been talking about it, you're probably suddenly more aware of that. And that's because you've directed some attention towards it, right? There's been a spotlight shined on that. And I think that one of the more effective metaphors for attention uh, is a leaking pipe, right? If you have a leaking pipe in any kind of assembly, whether it's your house or a machine you're using or a hose, right, that has a leak in it, the water is not ultimately going to get to where it needs to go in order to accomplish its task. And that's sort of what happens with attention, right? Our focus leaks out into areas that are distractions and that ultimately hinders our ability to be as successful as we might otherwise be able to be. That brings us to the second part of mindfulness and that second part is about poise. So poise is acting in service of our values despite conflicting internal states and we'll be explaining what internal states are in just a second so if you haven't heard that term before don't worry about it uh internal states internal states refer to the constantly present and ever-changing emotions thoughts and physical sensations that occur in our bodies right so are you happy are you sad are you hungry are you comfortable are you uncomfortable all of these various things uh, that potentially can get in the way of our pursuit of our goals right and I'm sure you've experienced this before if you're mad you probably play worse and for some of you maybe you play better but ultimately whether it makes you better or worse, it's a problem because you're not doing it consciously, which means you can't control that outcome. 
Internal states more often than not play critical roles in determining our performance levels, which means that our awareness of them and our ability to sort of overcome them is going to always be really important to our performance level and to performance mastery. The last thing we have to talk about before we get into the exercise is this idea of values and value commitment. Values are the guiding principles that inform our behavior. So in your life, that might be kindness, right? I want to be a kind person. And in debate, that might be I want to be competitive. I want to be assertive. I want to be dominant. I want to be intelligent, right? Whatever it is, I want to act in a certain way. I want my behavior to be guided by a principle, by a value that is important to me and that I can strive towards, that it's sort of actionable. Committing to our values means acting in service of those values, even when our internal states conflict with our pursuit, right? So being able to refocus, recenter ourselves when we are angry or when we are hungry or when the tournament started late and we're having a bad day because our favorite pen isn't there. So that brings us to our exercise. This exercise is probably going to take five to ten minutes. Um, the most important thing is... Uh, Try and have an open mind to this. If you're not into it and you just wanted to know about mindfulness in general, that part of the video is largely over. But I think this is really important in terms of developing sort of actionable things you can do to be better. Uh, and so let's begin the exercise. To get started, go ahead and sit down and try to have a posture that allows you to breathe as if you were standing up. And what I mean by that is... When we're standing up and we breathe in, especially when we breathe in deeply, our body is sort of able to expand in all directions, right? Um, your stomach expands, your back expands a little bit, your chest moves, especially when breathing deeply, which means that if your back is against a chair, uh, it's going to be a little bit difficult for that expansion to happen, and that can limit you in some regards. Additionally, it's pretty important while you're sitting up to have your feet flat on the floor. So go ahead and start with your eyes open. And at this point, I want you to take a few deep breaths. And these breaths should be forced. Uh, you want them to be as deep as possible and somewhat loudly so that someone could potentially hear you doing it. And as you continue to take these deep breaths in, I want you to pay attention to sort of where the breath moves your body, which parts are moving, and become aware that each breath has its own variance to it. Each breath is a little bit different than the last and maybe moves your body a little bit differently than the previous one. And on the next breath, just go ahead and gently close your eyes and Return to normal, natural, relaxed breathing. Sort of breathing as necessary. Don't, don't force it. Just come into your regular breathing pattern, sort of relaxed. And at this point, I want you to focus your attention towards your body. And I want you to especially feel your contact points with the world. Feel your weight. Feel gravity acting upon you. And so that means feel where you're sitting, right? Uh, where your back meets the chair. Are your feet on the ground? Are your arms on the armrest of your chair? Are they on your lap? Just take this time to connect with the world and become aware of the sensation of gravity and just that connection, that grounding point. And now... I want you to start to become aware of the sounds in your environment. And that's going to be the sounds that are somewhat close by and the sounds that are a little further away, the sounds coming through your headphones or your speakers. Just take in all of the sounds that are in whatever space you happen to be in at this time. And as you're taking in these sounds, you may become aware of your thoughts, sort of drifting away at times and noticing that you're no longer focused on the sounds. And when this happens, you should just gently bring your attention back, focus again on the sounds. And it's important that as you bring this attention back, this isn't a punishment, right? You're just recentering on the sounds, redirecting your attention. 
and now we're going to focus on doing a body scan and I want you to sort of start from your head and just identify where you're feeling discomfort or even comfort and begin to construct an image of the current state of your body from the head down and just become aware of these internal states the physical sensations the emotional sensations and more importantly notice how these potential areas of lightness or of pain sort of rise into existence and fade out of existence without you really doing anything about it. Now I want you to focus on your thoughts for a few seconds and I want you to start with the motivation you have for watching this video or any of our videos. Why are you pursuing this content, this program? Why is mindfulness something that interested you? And next, I want you to think of how it affects your life beyond your discipline or your competitive performance, just your life in general, outside of debate or outside of whatever competitive thing it is you came here for. And after that, I want you to briefly turn your focus towards how your motivation to do this and to pursue mindfulness or to pursue your craft potentially impacts your relationships with the people around you and how mindfulness and the ability to refocus your attention might benefit others as you simultaneously learn to benefit yourself. And now you can go ahead and turn your attention back to the sound in the space around you. And go ahead and get a picture of that. Sort of stay in the present moment, listening to the various sounds around you, and taking stock, taking stock of your environment, and getting a picture of your personal world. And then whenever you're ready, gently open your eyes and take a few seconds to appreciate the kind of sensations you get from doing an exercise like this. What do you feel as far as your focus and your existence in the present moment? Is it a light feeling? Is it sort of freshness? Are you focused? Are you tired? Are you maybe more relaxed than you were beforehand? And I want you to be aware that it, it's totally normal to feel fresh or heavy or even tired or exhausted because we're bringing our mind to the present moment and our mind is usually not aligned with our body because it's running off and we realize how tired we are but I don't necessarily want you to give in to that tiredness or see this as a relaxation activity, right? But rather it's some moments to focus on what it is we desire. Lastly, I want to note that there are always going to be distractions and that's totally normal, but bringing focus back is what builds that attention muscle. Distraction in some way becomes a reward because it serves as an opportunity to do a rep, like a repetition, like picking up the weight and to develop this skill. And remember, this isn't about reprimanding yourself for losing attention. It's about recentering. So now that we're done with the exercise, let's talk about some actionable things you can do. First, you can repeat this exercise. Uh, come back to this video whenever you want or just go through it in your own process. Uh, in order to practice identifying internal states, you need to go ahead and define core values that will guide your practice and competitive pursuit and things that you want, right? Things that you can strive to will yourself to despite internal states. And then lastly, when faced with internal states that conflict with those values, take these instances as a chance to practice discipline and act in service to the value despite psychological or physiological tension. For example, before we wrap up, 
rather than thinking I want to win but I am angry think I want to win and I'm angry or rather than thinking I want to do research but I'm tired think I want to do research and I'm tired that's going to be everything for the video today uh, thanks for checking it out and we look forward to uh, working with you in the future and hopefully mindfulness can benefit you as much as it benefited me during my pursuit